Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Duel video, and this time we're going to be playing with something that I wanted to test out uh, from YCS Atlanta, and that is based Lolly's Mech Knight Invoked deck list. Now, this is his list card for card. I didn't want to mess around with it. I just wanted to test it and see how good it was because he did have decent results with it. He finished 7-1 day one with only one loss, and then the only reason he did not get to top 32 is that he showed up again for day two, and due to some unfortunate turns of events, he was not capable of getting uh, a match win on his uh, in any of his three rounds day two. Uh, like, it was just, it was unfortunate. It was unfortunate to see, unfortunate to hear, but this was a deck that I did not actually think would be that good and it's probably a deck that will not be nearly as good in the future as it was for YCS Atlanta uh, considering that uh, like people will start playing around Mech Knight cards potentially but I, I think this deck might have some potential it's very interesting it's a very unique deck um, and it fits the same bill of like the deck that I played at YCS Atlanta 2016 of like I played Mermails with Neptibus back then and that was a deck that I loved playing because the die roll didn't matter because all I had to do was sit down and my opponent's either going to choose to go first, which I'm okay with, or I'm going to win the roll and choose to go second, which I'm also okay with. And this is one of those decks that's also like that. Like, you just want to go second so that your uh, Mech Knights can trigger, uh, so that you can draw all these cards that are good for going second, like Regeki and Mind Controls, and then you can just sort of step up your game plan as you want to go forward with uh, with how things will interact. But I'm going to play a TCG legal match with Siding on Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro, or at least I'm going to attempt to. I want to test how this deck operates. I want to test how this deck runs. I want to see how well it functions. Uh, it's very simplified and streamlined. I haven't played too much with this deck, but I'm very familiar with what both engines do, so it shouldn't be a problem. But basically, that's all I really want to discuss. Like, I think this deck is actually just, like, really cool in terms of its theory and its construction. Uh, but I never thought that it would be decent enough to even come close to topping a YCS, but it actually was. Like, both Lolly and Ryan Levine were playing this deck, and Ryan Levine bubbled the top 32 cut. Uh, so, like, there's a few different things that are uh, that are capable of being done in the future in terms of innovating this deck, I believe, that we might be able to discover. But anyway, enough of that nonsense. Let's jump straight into some gameplay, shall we? All right, so I've put up my own host of TCG Legal match format. The dual note says... Meta decks, please. Uh, and it turns out that even when you go through all of those hoops, sometimes people will still enter with their shitty Flower Guardian deck, and you'll destroy them because your deck is at least a meta is like a meta viable deck, and their deck is not. Um, <laughs> or you play against people that are playing against uh, that are playing meta decks like Pendulums or Two Draco, and they just suck. Like people constantly trying to tell me, like, because I hate Yu-Gi-Oh Pro, right? I absolutely hate it. Um, the only thing I like about it is the fact that it does have, um, like, some compet- It has some, uh, some merit when you're live streaming because it does do things- It makes things easier for you to follow when you're live streaming. That's why I prefer to use it when I do stream. Uh, or when I do things like this, because that means I can discuss things. Uh, and, uh, stuff is good. Uh, because, like, I'll never be, like, overrun by somebody on Dueling Book that just started doing plays and I didn't pay attention. And then, like, wait, I had a response. Um, it's never anything like that. This person's name is Farfa. I doubt it's actually Nadir. Uh, <laughs> foolish graph. Uh, hmm. This seems like the best place to Ash Blossom. Because this keeps the Seer from coming out. He can send Seer with Fiendish Rhino Warrior. But I don't think there was a better place for me to Ash. But I have Alistair plus a bunch of Mech Knights. So that's actually pretty good. There's only one card in his hand that's left. See, I wouldn't even consider this a meta deck, because it's BA, it doesn't really, it's it's more anti-meta now than meta, but still, like, if the person plays well, it's going to get used as a video, uh, because, like, shit me, man, if I'm going to play against people playing True Draco and Pendulums, and all they do is set scales, Pendulum summon two monsters, and pass, like, I'm going to actually want to hurt myself, um, but okay, milled cherries, milled ash, milled mind crush, okay. So now Rhino could send Skarm or send Seer. Okay, sending Skarm. Now this Alec is just chilling on the field, but did not play around the Mech Knights. I'm going to summon this Blue Sky and I'm going to fuck you up. Oh, they had Seer in hand already. Oh, no, never mind. That played around the Mech Knight. <laughs> Shit. Damn it. All right, well, so Seer got discarded. So Seer can float back a card, but there's no Dante in Grave, so... Uh, there's no real meaning towards floating back a card. Alright, sorry for that little cut. Had a little, uh, technical difficulty I had to deal with. Okay, what do you search in the Infaz? Uh, Tour Guide. Okay, so just Beatrice Tour Guide? That's so actually easy to deal with. Um, 
so actually easy to deal with. So we'll just normal summon this. Uh, we'll activate this thing's effect. Uh, and I'll be able to get Invocation, I'll be able to set a card. Everything will be good. So, yes. Activate this. Get Invocation, set it in front of the Beatrice. What are you going to do? Um, uh, you're detaching Farfa. Okay. Well, if you detached Dante, I would have definitely Ash Blossomed that. But, so, this is fine. I can still play the game with, like, Mega Knights. As wild as that sounds, I can still just play the, get the game with Mech Knights. Sending Fairy Tail Snow? The fuck are you? Alright. I see. Yeah, Farfa banished this. Cool. Cool shit, my dude. Uh, I'm going to set this in front of the Beatrice. I'm going to Special Indigo. And then, uh, and then we should be good. That's the theory, at least. Special this. Activates effect target itself. Like, this Beatrice is up here just cucking him more than anything. Like, this fairy tale snow doesn't really do anything. Like, you're gonna summon the snow, yes, but, like, this will be off the board by the time that snow comes out. So, very interesting that you choose to activate it there. I, I don't think that this at all is correct. Yeah, because that fairy tale snow is now gonna come out and do a whole lot of nothing. Um, literally a whole lot of nothing. Uh, so I'll just add this. And you summoned it here! Why would you summon it here? What? 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 You want me to get two searches? What the fuck? Alright. Cool. I'll take it. I'll take it, mate. I'll take it. Battle phase. I'll take it. I'll just kill this snow. That sounds good for me. You've got tour guide in your hand, but that tour guide doesn't do anything with this Beatrice here. I doubt you want to get rid of the Beatrice. I also have Ash for the tour guide. I've got a handful of mech knights. I, I think this is fine. I'm gonna summon it over here. For the specific reason of like if my opponent decides to get cheeky with like a Kashyyyk Magician. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, co top deck Cosmic Cyclone played on the invocation. That, okay, sure. Sure. <laughs> okay. The card wasn't live until next turn anyway. I don't know why you did that. Like... There's so many other ways for me to get this card in my deck. You have Tour Guide, or are you gonna do nothing? Uh, let's see. There's six. Uh, no. You can send a card. I don't care. You can 100% send a card. Send a card, add a card back, I don't care what you decide to do. This person... I don't know what they're on. I don't know what they're trying to do. But they're not in that great a position. Because if they kill this, I get to pop the Beatrice. Um, this can pop... As long as I summon a card in this extra monster zone first, that's the key. I can out both Dante Pilgrim. Um, uh, oh no, it says target. Okay, so this can't out Pilgrim. Because I thought it just... Because it destroys in the same column, I thought it didn't target. But because of instances like this, uh, it, does say, it does say target on it. So I had to double check that. So I can't out Dante Pilgrim. But what I can do is just make uh, Macaba and like negate this thing's effect. Uh, so what do you add back? Add it back, Seer. Cool. Summon Tour Guide. Are you gonna activate the effects? You are. I'll Ash Blossom that. That whore can die. Um, we don't want traps around here. But so you could suicide with Alistair, and then you could run over the blue sky. That inherently plays around my uh, my Mech Knights that are in hand still. Which is good. Uh, I still have the purple guy coming back, so that's fine. And I just need to draw into one of eight cards? No! One of ten cards, because I've got two invocations left in the deck, too. I've got the three field spells, the three terraformings, two more Alistairs, two more invocations. I've got ten cards, I've got one third of my deck as cards I can draw to just make Macaba, and that's really good. Okay, so, did the right play. The Seer is in hand. Uh, what did you send? Oh, you sent a Skarm off of the Beatrice. I see. Okay. Now, this Fairy Tale Snow is something that can activate, because Fairy Tale Snow just has to banish seven other cards in your hand field or graveyard, so they can get, get rid of the Beatrice. Get rid of cards in hand. There it is! Alright. Okay, so we'll summon this here. I'm going to set this. I'm going to special 
Um, one of these. A special this one. Yeah. Special this. Activate its effect, yes. So I'll use its effect to search for another copy of Purple Dude, right? And uh, so what that's going to yield is I'm going to make a Link Monster up here. I'm going to make Underclock Taker with, uh, with like, these two. And so then I'll be able to special summon this one out of my hand here. And so because I'm going to have this in this zone, uh, well, like, I don't even need, think I need to make the Underclock Taker, actually. Um, but I could. That's the thing, is that I have the ability to, so might as well, right? Um, but so we'll go Underclock Taker uh, with these two here. And then I can play Invocation and summon Makaba. I'll have to negate the the snow, which will be a problem, but not something that's hard to deal with. Actually, let's see. If I special summon this first, right? If I special summon this, I can pop the Beatrice. That summons Pilgrim here, uh, and then I'm able to flip the Invocation. I'm able to get Makaba, uh, get Alistair back, and then run over the Dante Pilgrim. My opponent only has a Seer in hand. Uh, that seems like it's the best way to handle this situation. I could be wrong. I could be right. I should have special summoned this first and moved it. Uh, but that's okay. Let's see. So I can, I can normal summon Alistair, actually. So this is actually great. Yeah, we'll do this. We'll do this first. So I can normal summon Alistair. So normal summon Alistair and get Invocation and then set it, like, somewhere. <laughs> uh, but so I can get Purgatrio... Which would be good. I can get Makaba, which is better. So we'll get that. So from Grave, I will banish your snow and my Alistair. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Great. All right. So now we'll activate this. Uh, shuffle back the invocation for that. Now I can activate this. Pop the Beatrice. Everything was riding on whether or not like he chained snow to my invocation or not. That's what was. Uh, that's what the factor was. But so we'll pop this. And then he'll try to negate it. I'll then negate the Beatrice. Discarding this. And now I can just normal summon Alistair. Okay, perfect. Perfect. Perfection. Okay. This works. Uh, is this enough for game? Probably not. <laughs> if we're being real. Uh, but I could actually make Elysium. I can make Borload. I could do a lot of things. I can make Skulldread. Ooh. Spicy, spicy. Which I think I will. As wild as that sounds, yes, I will. That's just the better play, because then that's game. Yeah, because I've got the invocation already. So yeah, we'll do this. Uh, activate the effect. Draw these. Put this back. Uh, put this back. And put this back, because then I can just search it and summon it. Or no, we'll put back this. Ogre sucks against this deck. What am I doing? Uh, and then we'll activate this. Just get the meltdown for free, just because we can. And that will be good. So we'll do this. Yes, add. Yes, do that. Uh, invocation here. And we'll summon this. So we'll banish Alistair from grave. And we'll banish the Dante from your grave. And summon this uh, here. And then I can use this to special this from hand. And then we're good. Then we are good. Battle phase. Game. Uh, this is game with just these three, like, through 8,000. Like, this is 28, 28, 28. That's actually just huge. Uh, that's 28, 28, 28. That's uh, 84? Yeah. 84 sounds like the right number. Or wait. Is it? 8, 16. Yes, 84. <laughs> I My math is, uh, is taking a tumble. Okay, so that was game one. Shit me, man. Alright, so I'm going to be going second against a B A deck. He's playing Snow, which makes me want to side in Lancia's, but at the same time, uh, doesn't do a lot. Uh, Ogre doesn't do nearly anything in this matchup, so those can come out. The Gamma Seals can go for Beatrice. Uh, these are also just kind of in here for Beatrice. Um, what else do I want? I could put Evenly Matched. That sounds like a cool card. Uh, but Twin Twister is probably just better. I don't know. I'm unsure. Unsure entirely. But I'll take out Desires, because I'm going to be starting with six anyway, so I don't really want to have my hands clumping with those. Yeah, we'll go with this. This seems like... We'll, we'll experiment with this. Experimentation. Leaving the Veiler in, obviously, because being able to, like, 
Uh, like, if he summons Rhino Warrior like he did last game, and I Valor it, then, like, if he reveals a BA monster and then I Valor the Rhino Warrior, his protection goes away. Uh, so then, like, the BA monsters start dying, and then he's locked under Rhino Warrior for the turn. So that's cool. That's the cool part. But so, okay, so Magical Meltdown plus Blue Sky. That's a Twin Twister. Neat. Okay. Um, well, what I'll do is I will first set my scapegoat, and then I will special summon this and see if it, uh, see if this, like, gets negated by something or if this is anything real. If it's not, then we're awesome. Ghost Ogre. That! Uh. Uh. I might as well go ahead and activate this, then. Um, because I don't need multiples of this field spell. So we'll just do this. I don't need multiples? Okay, that's Twin Twister. Sure. You're going to discard a card. That doesn't do anything. Cool. Amazing. Um, so I, I lose my scapegoat, but that's fine. I'm fine with that. Because now this has to get ashed. Oh, you have ash? Oh my god. <laughs> Hard lose to gamma. Please. Uh, okay, so... Me getting rid of the field spell was incorrect. Should have gotten rid of invocation. But we, we're learning things. Like, that was just an unreal instance. Like, who the fuck? Um, awesome. Okay, so I should have played the field spell first. Baited the ash. Yeah, okay. There, there's a bunch of different things that happen. But I don't think I'm actually dead. Uh, because I've got a lot of cards I could also still just draw. But, this is BA. So it might do something crazy to me. <laughs> uh, and uh, it's not like I'm going first next game either. I'm again going second. Uh, but so, okay. So he opened Ogre, Ash, Twin Twister, and a Skarm. Amazing deck. <laughs> uh, which means, which leads me to believe that, like, he didn't have any other BA monster in his hand either. So I shouldn't, like play expecting this card to be a BA monster, I think. Because, like, you could have special to BA, then normal Skarm, and then milled, and then had a better card to discard off Twin Twister, like Farfa, or something like that. Um, so, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I should be playing around, like, the fact that he has, that, like, he could have another BA in his hand. Okay, so yeah, there's nothing. There's no other BAs in his hand, so I'm just getting Seer dante there might be another BA in his hand that he might use to make Beatrice, but that's about it. And that doesn't do anything. If, if that was the case, this should be a Skarm. Because this Seer will die and it'll float for nothing. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting plays. Alright. Uh, okay, so this goes to main phase 2. Yeah, it's nothing. Alright, what are these cards? Woo! Oh shit! Alright. <laughs> Alistair! Yes! Activate. Okay, so I've got two invocations now, which is great. Uh, so let's see, what's in his graveyard? I know there's, I know there's an Ash in here, so I can make Purgatrio, uh, or Purgatorio, what is it? Purgatrio. Um, it's 23, gains 200 attack for each card your opponent controls. Um, okay, so this would be 23, 25, those would be big enough to deal with Dante. That's all I needed to know. Okay, so perfect. So we'll do this. Uh, making Purgatrio, uh, banishing this and banishing my opponent's Ash Blossom. So that's good. Uh, so then we can kill this and then do some shit. So that's what we'll do, is some shit. So now, uh, because the thing is I could, uh, I'm going to attack the Dante first. Uh, because attacking the Dante, like, it's gonna do things. If he attacks, if he uses anything with the Seer... Uh, like, it still just dies. So, I think this is still fine. His cards in his hand don't seem to be anything crazy. So, I think that this is just fine for me. I think it's just my match to win. Which is insane, considering how poorly that first turn uh, interaction went for me. I was so much on the poorest end of that interaction. Um, no, I'm not going to do anything. I'm not going to do anything to calculating damage. Wait, is this still the end of the turn? It is until the end of the turn. I definitely should have dropped that. Because I have the invocation in my hand already. I can just make Macaba. Like, pretty easily. Uh, like, this is stuck up here, but that's fine. I could just, like, hold this. Damn it. Okay, well, it's probably not going to be too relevant. At least I'm putting, I'm banking on it not being too relevant. For that extra thousand that I would do here. Um, and I'm not even going to discard it when I attack over the Seer, either. 
don't even think that's ideal. Uh, but even if he summons Dante, this is still 25. So like that's so this card is so powerful against BA. <laughs> he has to he has to do something about this. Uh, the Seer can bring back a card, yeah, but if you keep bringing back cards... Okay, bring back Dante. Uh, sure, I'll kill it again. Wait, I can't kill it again. Wait, I can! I can discard the Alistair and kill it again. Yeah! <laughs> Fuck it! We'll do it! I wasn't gonna do it before, but I guess I'll do it now. So what did he add back to his hand? He added back, um... He added back Graph. So he has the potential of having Graph Seer in his hand. I definitely should have just discarded this off the first attack. 100% <laughs> should have discarded Alistair. Because I already have the invocation. Um, like, it's it's so simple. It's so simple to have. And the thing is, my opponent doesn't even know I have this invocation. Because, like, this invocation was already in my hand. I drew an Alistair. I summoned it and searched an invocation. This, there's no information of this being here. Alright. I know you're taking your time, Duelist, but... Gotta, gotta be quicker than this. At least that's what the timer is there for, right? But so, this deck is actually really good. This deck's actually a lot better than I gave it credit for. 100% much better than I gave it credit for. It, when you draw well, you just play slow and you play steady. And all of your cards have really good quality. Uh, because of the mech, the mech knights, the ones that you do play, have insane quality. The only one that doesn't have insane quality is like Indigo Eclipse. Uh, but, like, the Red Moon is really good. Like, shit. Yeah, my opponent's just surrendering. Okay. Cool. I'm pretty sure he had something to continue play. But you know what? I actually want to see what cards are in his hand. Alright, so the cards in his hand were a Cherries and another Ogre. The Ogre doesn't really do a lot because all he really had access to Ogring was my Alistair, which does nothing. And Reaper, I'm not sure if this is a card you'd actually keep in against Mech Knight Invoked. I mean, yes, like, you hit my Macabas, but, like... That doesn't really prevent the deck from having a win condition, especially, like, if you already put an Ashen Grave for Purgatorio, uh, or for, for uh, Purgatorio. Because, like, this is just, like, the MVP in this matchup, because, like, you just kill everything. Uh, like, depending on how many cards your opponent controls, like, you just, and, like, the floater wall just doesn't matter, because you attack everything once each, so, like, hmm. Very interesting. Very interesting that, uh, that this was a card that was kept in. I mean, like, I understand. Get rid of the Macabas. That's... That's a good strat, I'd guess, but, like, at the same time, like, this card was in your hand from turn one. Uh, this card was in the hand turn one, uh, as far as his replay goes. So, like, it was probably not even correct for you to ash my meltdown. You should have just let me go for my fusion play, and then, like, when I play Invocation, you chain cherries uh, to uh, get rid of my Macabas, And then, like, I'm forced to go into Purgatrio, and then at that point, like, it's very clear cut. Hmm. I think this I think this game could have gone a lot of different ways. I don't think that I should have won this one if my opponent played a little bit differently. Like not ashing the magical meltdown should have just reapered my Merkabas in response to invocation. Uh, because this doesn't prevent my opponent um, from activating Reaper in response to invocation. It just prevents my opponent from negating invocation. But they can still activate other like uh, quick effects like Reaper. Um, then that those go through completely unimpeded. But anyway. I guess that's going to be it for this video. This one's a bit long. Uh, the gameplay is kind of weird, but at the same time, it's really just, it paints the picture of how you play with this deck. You play slow and steady, and that's what gets you there. So I guess that sort of is helpful in its own right. I might play more with this deck, and I might follow this formula a bit more into the future of playing TCG Legal and playing match format with side decking, uh, because it did make it a lot easier to find people that were willing to actually play games, even though those people weren't necessarily, like, playing things uh, that were meta most of the time, like I said. Um, had that little bit of trouble at the beginning of the recording uh, session. But basically, you're still capable of finding people that are coming to play. Like, they sit down and they won't leave when something goes poorly. Uh, so that is something that I actually kind of enjoy the, the prospect of. But anyway, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. As always, check out the links in the description of my Facebook and Twitch and stuff if you want to connect with me, chat with me, and watch me on other forms of media, all that sort of stuff. But other than that, as always, guys, as I've already said, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for your time as usual, and I'll see you in the next video, guys. Take care. And so now the video's over, I'd like to give special thanks to my patrons, Iradium, Yuki Phoenix, Troy Perkins, Eric Gertson, Tour Guides Guy, and Ringleader, as well as everybody else that's supporting the lower tiers. You guys are forever awesome for the support that you give. You help make things on this channel possible, and I cannot express the amount of appreciation I have for you guys. You guys are awesome. 
Thank you so much for the support.